I received a call on the radio that they had a woman who was unconscious and wasn't breathing. And then one by one, call after call, came for people who needed resuscitation. It was total chaos and everybody on the team had to drop what they were doing and either pull people out of the water or perform CPR. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's got a pulse. That day we rescued 66 men, 11 women and 22 children and 36 people are believed to have died. I know what they're fleeing from. I've worked in Libya. I have heard their stories of slavery, of forced prostitution and rape. I have treated their wounds from abuses and torture. I have seen the appalling living conditions in Libya and they cannot go back. They simply cannot go back to this highly dangerous existence. European governments have forced an end to most search and rescue activities in the Mediterranean. A ruthless move that carries a heavy human cost. And despite fewer crossings, the chance of drowning has only increased. People still choose to risk death rather than face the inhumane conditions in Libya. Despite what we know about the dangerous conditions there, European governments are still supporting a system that forces people back to a country that is not safe for them. They are making it nearly impossible to do search and rescue activities, and some governments are even criminalising or life-saving work. In spite of the political obstacles placed in our path, MSF and our partners SOS Mediterranean are relaunching our life-saving activities in the Mediterranean. Why are we there? Because we have to be. Because like every other place in the world where we work in places of conflict and catastrophe, we are saving lives. And every human life is worth saving.